The Ethereum merge is coming, and the entire Ethereum community is excited. The merge is a major technological advancement that reduces supply issuance, makes Ethereum greener, and sets the stage for future upgrades to the network. But there's a catch, and one that very few people seem to be talking about today, even with the merge just days away. Of course, it's a huge technical challenge, and with any big technical challenge, there are risks. The merge will bring with it new ways that protocols can break, and new ways that hackers will be able to steal your hard-earned crypto. By the time you finish this video, you will have a very good idea of some of the potential risks that Ethereum faces during the merge, and you will know how to prevent your own crypto from being stolen, because nobody wants to be the victim of a repeat attack from a shadow fork. There are plenty of good videos on what the Ethereum merge actually is, but in essence, Ethereum is switching from an energy-intensive consensus model called Proof-of-Work to a much more efficient consensus model called Proof-of-Stake. This eliminates Ethereum miners and creates a class of Ethereum stakers who will stake their Ethereum in order to participate in the creation and validation of Ethereum blocks. The merge is scheduled to happen on September 15th and will take about 12 minutes to complete. During that time, pretty much every single major crypto exchange has already announced that they will pause deposits and withdrawals. This is completely normal and users' funds won't be at any risk during that time. But there is risk to the merge. It's impossible to have such a massive change in a system without unpredictable risks and consequences. And one of the most unpredictable things right now is how the merge will affect some of the most popular applications on Ethereum. Every single app on Ethereum, including all of the big ones like Aave, Uniswap, and OpenSea, will be stress tested during this time. In fact, many of these apps are just now discovering some major risks that they will face and are rushing through upgrades ahead of the merge in order to mitigate these risks. Let's take a look at Aave for example, crypto's biggest lending protocol with over $10 billion locked on its platform. When the Ethereum merge happens, it is very likely that there will be a proof of work fork that continues to operate, even when the vast majority of activity switches to the official proof of stake chain. If you're familiar with crypto history, this will be similar to when Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash split and when Ethereum split with Ethereum Classic. Anyone holding Ethereum when the merge happens in their wallet will get an equal amount of proof of work Ethereum. Even though this proof of work Ethereum will likely be worth less, it will still be worth something. So what if there was a way to get a ton of this proof of work Ethereum without actually having to buy an equal amount of that Ethereum before the merge? Recently, some crypto insiders discovered that there is a sneaky way to use Aave that could get you a ton of proof of work Ethereum basically for free. Someone could do this by depositing Ethereum into Aave and then using that Ethereum to borrow USDC. They can then swap this USDC for more Ethereum and deposit that, repeating the cycle until they have a ton of debt in USDC and a ton of Ethereum deposited. Then after the merge, they will have this exact same position on the proof of work chain. But USDC has already said that they will not support the proof of work chain, which means that USDC would be worth zero. And because this person would have the same position on the proof of work chain, their debt would be worth a zero, and they would be left with a bunch of free proof of work Ethereum. In the past few weeks, we've already seen a large number of people on chain trying to employ this strategy. The problem arises when too many people try to do this and the utilization rate on Aave gets up to 100%. If that happens, it becomes impossible for anyone to withdraw their ETH, effectively creating a bank run. Aave realized this and currently has a proposal to pause all ETH lending until after the merge, which just shows how serious they are taking this risk. But this is just one example on one lending protocol. Ethereum's ecosystem is huge. And with massive amounts of change come a massively increased surface area for attacks and exploits like this one. Even though Aave is going to fix this ahead of the merge, we're left wondering what other exploits are actually possible. It's definitely possible that there are some hackers that have realized something that might happen during or after the merge and are just waiting to pounce. In these situations, 
we are really depending on the app developers in order to realize and make sure that their protocols are hardened before the merge. But there are hacks and scams that will be enabled by the merge that you as a user need to be aware of in order to protect your crypto. The biggest one being shadow fork attacks. While it is generally accepted that there will be a proof of work Ethereum going forward, this chain will likely have a different chain ID than Ethereum, but there's likely going to be another third chain created at the time of the merge, which is the proof of work version of Ethereum with the same exact chain ID. This is called a shadow fork and will happen when miners don't update to either the new proof of work chain or the official proof of stake Ethereum chain. When you create a transaction on Ethereum, you are signing that transaction with your private key and effectively giving the go ahead for the Ethereum blockchain to process that transaction. One of the important components to that transaction is the chain ID. The problem is that even though the shadow fork is a different chain, it will have the same addresses and the same chain ID as the official Ethereum chain. What this means is that any transaction you send on the shadow fork will be just as valid as a transaction being sent on the Ethereum mainnet. A hacker or scammer could convince you to send your useless shadow fork ETH to them, and then they can turn around, submit that same transaction to the real Ethereum, and the same transaction will happen just like it did on the shadow fork, thereby giving your ETH to them. So how can you actually prevent this? First of all, be very careful when interacting with any proof of work chains after the merge. If something ever seems like too good of a deal to be true, it probably is and you should avoid it. In fact, the best solution is probably to not interact with any of these proof of work chains at all. But if you do insist on interacting with a shadow fork, you may want to move your official Ethereum mainnet ETH to a different wallet before you do that. Then if somebody tries to repeat a transaction, there will be no ETH left for them to steal. The merge is coming whether we are ready for it or not, and overall, it will be a huge step for Ethereum and crypto as a whole. In fact, the merge is just step one on a whole list of Ethereum upgrades. If you want to learn more about those next upgrades, check out this two minute overview I made on it over here.